Welcome to Gen Visibility interview series. We bring visibility to our genesis, geniuses, genealogy, generosity, and gentleness. You may feel isolated or alone, but you are not. We are a vibrant, thriving, creative, and amazing community. We are adventurers, trendsetters, and trailblazers. If you want to be part of Gen Visibility, please submit our form by visiting our website, genvisibility.com. Your voice matters, your story matters, and we cannot wait to see you shine. Let's uh, get you introduced. What's your name? My name is Royal Blue Parker. Such a great name. Want to tell me about Thank your name you. a bit or um, anything? Well, my name was Shana, uh, C-H-E, with a tilde over the N. A Shana, and uh, Shana is a Jewish word. Um, you know, like something about good, something good. You know, um, and I really liked my name. You know, so I, for a long time, you know, I I kept it, and I would just say, you know, my name is Shane, um, because it was easy to kind of relate to, and also on paper, you know, with it being costly and time you know, consuming to go through the process of having a name change, um, having Shana, C-H-E-N-A, and also being called Shane still worked. Right. People read Shane and they said, okay, it's Shane, you know, they didn't think twice about it. Um, so I, I keep it, you know, and that's, I keep it. But, um, you know, my name Royal, I got, uh, I named myself Royal, um, when I was talking to basically what happened was, I know it's like a sim simple, it's really simple how it happened. Um, there was a group on Instagram called Black Trans TV and I followed them closely and they were in the city and um, they are no longer together. They're dismantled now, but one of the people on there was named Sir Knight, who is now named um, Ace Excelsior or something, but um, called me Royal one day and he was like, yo, Royal, something, something. I was like, did you just call me Royal? And he was like, I'll call everybody Royal. And I was like, for some reason it stuck. And yeah, I'm just gonna roll name. with it. Yeah. I was like, I'm just gonna roll name. with it. Yeah. And you know, blue, my, my favorite color is blue. And a lot of the times when I tell people my name is Royal, they think I'm talking about purple. Oh. Um, which, you know, I think because I think I am deeming myself as royalty. Oh, by okay. saying my name is Royal, and I guess purple is a color of royalty. Um, you know, I'm not really familiar with it. As far as I know, purple just is, 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 is blue and red mixed together. It makes purple. It's not a primary color. It's a secondary right. color. Uh -huh. And even and like, purple. And then, secondary. <laughs> I, you know, so blue. So I want people to know, like, it's royal blue. You know, yes. it's, not, it's not purple. It's royal blue. Cool. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. So um, why don't you share a bit about, you know, like where you come from, where you grew up, what's your family yeah. like? Um, just give us a sense a bit about, about, you know, about you growing up before we go into adulthood. Okay, so, you know, growing up, I have to say um, I had a pretty typical lifestyle of like a token Black person. You know, I, I definitely was the only Black person around. You know, there wasn't a lot of Black people when I was growing up. Um, and when I, I say that, I'm, yeah, when I when I grew up in Amin in New York, okay. um, I say that, you know, because, like, even though my family is Black, you know, both sides, dad and mom, um, I am more showing predominantly Black. My skin is not as fair as theirs. So, for instance, like I would go to school and people would not believe that I was black or fully black because my mom looked white. You know, I got made fun of for being mixed and I wasn't even mixed. Um, I mean, I got fun of for, you know, the color of my skin, right? Not being able to wash clean. Um, people ask me, how did I know when I wasn't dirty anymore? Ugh. Kids. This is an elementary school. This is not even in middle school. I'm, I haven't even touched middle school. This is all kindergarten, um, uh, elementary. And I'm getting these things coming at me, like just about 
who I am or why I am and why does my family look like this and why do I look different? You know, like, and, and we, and I call it a token black person, you know, because it's like back in the day, my family came to this area to become somebody and make better. They came from the South Maryland and moved up here. I believe that the South starts at the Mason Dixon line and runs straight across. So that's why I say they came from the South and they moved up here. And for them living and assimilating with that culture, white people, and having that token sense, like it's like a gift, right? It's like almost like a privilege from where you could look at my ancestors have come from, where we've come from, right? Especially in the deep South and the segregation and the slavery and all that type of forms of discrimination, like to be able to have their children go to school or white kids. It's, it's a privilege. So that's why I say I was the token black person of the family, you know, like they felt as though like they were trying to give me the best education they could by having me, you know, with this group. And the problem is, though, you know, I'm with a bunch of, of, of low lives, you know, right? People who are ignorant, who are obviously being taught somewhere at home that, you know, because somebody's black, they're different. You know, like just because the color of my skin makes me something that you're not or something that's less than so you can talk to me some kind of way, even as a child. Right. You know, and I would tell my parents, I would tell my family about these things and, you know, they would be in an uproar like this is not happening. Once again, you know, um, my family, although black, they do not show they're not they're fair skin, very fair skin. And they, too, went to the same schools as I did. So they didn't really have the problems that I had. So they were very pissed, right? They're like, yo, I know that teacher. I know the print. We generations. So you mean to tell me? They was <laughs> so hating I, on me. They was mad because yes. I was looking good too. You feel me? Like I was taller than everybody, right? I was more developed than the girls. Like, you know, like, and then and now I look back, Anna, and I'm like, it's because they were like, you know, they were hating. Like, I think about, right, what they did to the women and the children of people that look like me, like where all this is festering up from and what type of community is out in Amenia, like, and near Oniontown and Wasaic and Dover and Millerton and even Millbrook, like these people, you know, they didn't like me. And like I said, my family knew everybody. But because of my skin color, I was darker than my other family, you know, they Literally, like my cousin and I would ride the same bus until things got so bad for me on the bus that I had to leave the regular bus and ride oh, the wow. short bus. Yeah, like, wow. but that he never got really... picked on. Wow. And he was really Jewish. Wow. And, and I'm not even I'm not saying they should have made fun of him or anything like that because he was Jewish, right? right? But like, if you're a real racist, any real racist knows, you know. <laughs> We don't like right. Jews either, but yeah, be, they, they, <laughs> but they don't even know. Yeah, they're not real racist, right? Wow. They just like so you got, you got, yeah. That was not, that was not the right community, not the right community. So oh no! That, but then it gets better. Wrong. So, so it gets, it gets, it gets better. You know, there's a lot, there's a lot within that, but you know, I'm not sure what we really want to focus on. So I'm not going to go too deep into too many things. But if there's anything you want to touch on, I'll bring right, it up. Right. But um, so then I get out of that school because, of course, I can't stay. Right. And my mom, we move. Mm -hmm. Your mom is a teacher. Remind me. She's a TA. Yeah. 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 She teaches. My so mom teaches. Was, right. So she and, and, and they came to that community because they wanted you to be they, they wanted you to be in a white community to give you more opportunities. And they didn't see this coming. So. So I wouldn't say they picked that community like. As in like that. So, so my family came up here. This is the, I'll tell you why my family came up here. How about that? I'm not sure if this is going to end, but my family came up here for a better way of life. They left the South to move up here North to start a family and a business within the family. I am the fourth generation professional horse show trainer. My great grandfather is one of the first black men in the Horseman Hall of Fame. Wow. My grandfather is in the Horseman Hall of Fame. My uncles are in the Horseman wow. Hall of Fame. I am the first generation at the time female to show horses in my family. We, oh, we, wow. we own a farm. We have generations on generations who are, you know, very well known and um, 
well, you know, renowned professional horse. That's men. amazing. So do you work with horses? I mean, I know still, you're a teacher, yes, a yeah. teacher assistant, uh, but you still work with horses. I believe there's nothing I can't do, right? There's nothing you can't do with your higher power and some faith and, and good support. I still do manage to get time with horses where most of the time it's in the summer or, you know, if I have time um, during the weekends, you know, I go up on some farms and, you know, not to like boast and brag, but, you know, as I do talk about myself, I do realize that some of the things I have gone through deserve recognition. You know, my name, because of my family's heritage, carries weight. All I have to say is that, you know, my name is Royal Parker. You know, my grandfather is Joseph Parker. You know, I, I opened, it opens doors. They've set a precedent for me. They've paved a way and I've, and I'll always have that outlet because of them. Is that your, like, is that your passion? Would you want to be full-time working with, with horses if you could? <sighs> Yeah, I probably would. You know, I probably would, but it's not. It's not, right? It's not because um, there's just so many other things that are involved in it um, that I just don't find as appealing anymore. And I don't know if my lifestyle would still be so, so fit for that type of, for that type of life. You know, um, right now, my most desiring, passionate, fire burning aspirations are fitness and being healthy and creating wealth. Yeah. You know, um, being healthy, being health and wealth. Health, like I, I, I get up every morning lately for the past month and I've been going to the gym at four o'clock. I wake up at four. Yeah, I wake up at four and I'm on a piece of equipment by five. Nice. Five, so five times out the week. You. Wow. That's, yeah. that's Yo, amazing. I got to get it done. I got to get it done. Right. Because literally. And, and I don't know if it's because I'm trans, right? Because as a, as a, as a, first of all, let me say this, right? I identify with my biological being. Um, Native Americans might consider me too spirited. I consider myself a trans man. So I identify with the fact that I was born a woman, a female, a girl. I identify with all that. I definitely do. I, I had a period once a month. I'm not going to disregard everything that I went through because it was hell right so I embrace <laughs> right I embrace it I acknowledge it and I appreciate that part of my life but now I'm transitioning into a man you know and there was just right and there's just like so much that has to go into this aspect of me being up at night literally like I tell people it would I can, my dreams keep me up at night they're like oh well nothing should keep you up and I'm like no see y'all must not get it <laughs> yeah, like when I mean it keeps me up at night, I mean like if I don't go to the gym, I feel like I'm missing out on a part of a life that I could have had, right? right? That I deserve, that I that I can have, that I can achieve, that is worth having, that's something that's honorable, right? I'm not out here doing all these stereotypical black male shit, right? I don't know if we're allowed to curse, but I'm not out here doing all that stereotypical mat black male stuff. You know, and, and what I mean by that is not saying that I have to prove something to somebody, but it's like unfortunate that because I'm black, there's people out there will think that I'm dumb. I know. Just because I'm black. So so I was raised to, you know, not put people wrong, but to be better, you know, to to purposefully go out and make a way of life that's honorable, an honorable living, right? Like a like have a real job. Yeah. You know, and I'm not knocking nobody that got their hustle that doesn't have a job, but like to retire, to have health insurance, to have dental coverage, like to go to school, to graduate. Like these are things that my family instilled in me at such a young age that I, I, I wouldn't be able to, you know, I mean, I just feel like this is how it has to be for me. And this is what I want, you know? Yeah. So you'd like to move from uh, the teaching uh, career that you're in right now at some point and like be a certified trainer or one way or another work in, in, in health, health and fitness and just kind of share your passion for that with with people. Um, no, no, I'm not going to leave my teaching job. No, no okay. I'm not leaving a teaching job and I probably won't do both at the same time. Um, but I am in school becoming a certified personal trainer because I want to 
get that underneath of me. I want to learn more about my body. I want to be able to help people. Um, but, and this is, and this is what I, this is, see, I know this is a big thought and I know this is like, but, but hear me out. So, you know, I'm with the activism and bring people together. I think that this is one of those things that everybody can get behind. Uh, a lot of times people are coming to me like, you know, well, what are we going to do different? You know, what's what's the next thing? Like, what is going to make that change another catalyst to push us to keep coming together in a nonviolent manner? Right. Because that's what a lot of people like me for. And they really are interested in and, and want to know more about like how I can be nonviolent, literally in the face of violence. Like. It's because I'm healthy. Right. It's because I'm, I'm one with myself. It's because I've had conversations on the inside that needed to happen so that I can come forward and present my best self to you and, and, and make that so that the world is, is, is better, right? Because if, if I'm just out here thinking that how I feel about myself and how I treat myself and what I eat and what I do and doesn't matter and, you know, well, oh, it, do, it doesn't matter if I do or don't, like, you, you know, it's not healthy. And that's what I mean by healthy. And I don't just mean certified personal training because a lot of times people hear that and they think weightlifting or, you know, athletics. And it's more than that for me. It's about being one with me and, and having a, a personal relationship with myself so that I can go out and be a better person for other people. Right. Yeah, it really sounds like it's informed by your spirituality. It's like it's like another way for you to to. Um, to do the work to you know to to take your place and do the work that you're meant to do and to be like you say your you know your best self presenting forward yeah. so that makes a lot of sense and you know i i got to i heard about you i got to know you right because of your activist yeah. work because you're working uh, uh, black lives matter um, and we haven't really touched, I mean, we have a lot of stuff that we could discuss, but maybe you, and, and I know you have political ambition, you want to run for, um, is it a city council or a mayorship? Remind me. You know, it's funny you mentioned that, right? Because I had political ambition. Um, what made me really not want to go after my political ambitions anymore is going to have to be, you know, real honestly, I feel like I was going to be like selling out, right? I feel like I was going to be cutting myself short on a lot of the things that I believe in so passionately that that I just, it's just not, right? And then the other thing, right? So it wasn't just one big thing. It was two big things because sacrificing me and my, you know, it, it, I, I'm not doing that anymore, right? I've realized right. that as Black people, we are always constantly over, I'm so mindful, it's terrible. It's terrible how it's like a, it's a gift and a curse. But um, the second thing was, right, I am not a people pleaser and I don't want to be. And I could give a fuck less about what some <laughs> racist right. bigot got to say. So, right. you know, it's, it's it, I just wouldn't have I couldn't sit with it and yeah, take no it and listen. Is, right. Not for I couldn't, and that's no, activism. and that's no place. But my activism, I'm with. See, see, now that's yeah, where I feel like I can have my gonna... spirit. Right. That's great. That's yeah. Great. Um, so before we maybe do talk more about uh, your activism, because I know that's a big, big part of of, of your um, of your life and um, yeah. your passion. Um, let's just go back a little bit. Um, okay. So you know, at some point in your so tell me a bit more about it. you say like middle school high school let's forward to high school okay Where middle school wait let's go to middle school to, oh okay let's go to middle school because middle school changed okay so went from all white to arlington middle school which is in the town of poughkeepsie now guess who ain't black enough to be black i'll be damned <laughs> i'll be damned i pull my pants up I, I talk proper. I say good morning. I smile. I I have beautiful, long, natural hair. I'm tall. Oh, here we go. Exactly. It happened. So, you know, I come there. And of course, once again, just discriminated. Like my old people. Like, yo, you got to be doing this to be down. And you got to be doing that. And I'm like, okay. And see, so now I'm like, yo, this must be 
what I have to do, right? And right. looking and back on it now and having this conversation with you, I realized that that's what happens to these kids, right? In the ghettos and in the hoods and in the projects. They become a product of their environment because they need to survive, right? At that point, I ain't got this turned. I ain't got that to turn. I'm tired of moving. I'm away from my family far enough as it is. Whatever I got to do to fit in, I'm fitting in. And that means a lot of different things, right? Um, and it wasn't all bad. I'll be honest, right? It wasn't all bad. Like, they helped me kind of, you know, embrace a society and a side of, of myself that I was not really understanding, right? You know, um, not, not, not saying that I should have been doing a lot of things that I was doing when I was with them, but I felt included. I felt part of, right. I felt right. like welcomed. I felt with like family and they weren't family, you know, like, right. so that's definitely a step up from being shamed for your skin color and being made to feel like something is wrong and, you know, dirty about you. Yeah. Uh, right. A major you know, up. and I stood out, of course, I'm tall, um, star athlete. You know, I mean, phenomenal. Uh, but of course, you know, like the Mike, Michael Jackson, I tried out for the basketball team and I got cut the first time I tried out. But then I ended up getting put on the team because somebody left. And of course, she was the only black girl. And I was and then so so moving forward to high school. Now, this is where it gets real fun. So now. Now I'm, I'm in I'm in I'm in the end. Right. I'm an athlete. I'm an all star athlete. I'm 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 phenomenal. Freshman year, I try out for varsity. I make it. That's how nice I am at Arlington. At Arlington. Sophomore year, I try out for varsity. I make it again. My junior year, my most important year of my career, try out for varsity. I get cut. Yes. You get cut. Why? Why? I don't even make the team. I don't even make the team. I'm like, wait, this don't sound right. Cause like either, either one or two things, like you ain't coaching right because you should have developed a player or right. two, like you are a racist. Cause you don't want Where's your white players to want? not be out. Yo, cause you're white players. Right. So, so on a basketball team, it's a team sport. Don't get me wrong. Right. And I'm all for team camaraderie, but when you're trying to get into college on a full division one scholarship for women's sports, basketball at that is competitive right yeah so I was better than all the other players on my team so when college recruiters would come to see let's say Sarah but they happen to see the team and there's Shayna at the time me royal kicking ass taking names why the hell would they want to talk to Sarah anymore when Shayna's looking better Right. Not good for business. Not good for business. Yo, my mom in an uproar once again. Now, here we go. And I, and I mentioned that because my mom, my mom goes through it just as much or not more than me. It's like watching. I'm not a parent. You are right. It's like watching your kid and wanting better for them and knowing right. that society is just out to get them right. literally. And and you don't want to beat them up, but you got to make sure that they know that something's out there to get them, right? Because if not, you're not doing it, you know, and it's fucked up because they're just right. kids. But how, how was the team in a school that was, that was, uh, uh, was it, is, was Arlington still primarily white, but you had a crew of, of black people there or was it more? Athletes like are black. I know, but why was your team mostly white then? Why? Oh, well, cause it was a woman. So women, um, I'm gonna be honest. Like, it takes money to develop talent a lot of times. At a, and as a young player, you have more white people being able to have money to spend on these camps and these coaches and things like that. And now you have definitely a lot of these fathers who have these money and they want their daughter because they only had a daughter to be an all star basketball player. They're pushing that money and they're developed. They're, they're good because women's sports is, you know, women's sports is different than guy sports, especially basketball. And it comes down even to the point where, you know, who's making the team. I've been not made teams because I look like a man. 
you know, I've been not made teams because, you know, I, I date women. I've not made teams because, you know, because it's a distraction. It's a distraction. You know, these, these women they can't take it and you're on the team and there's girls and now they like guys. I mean, now they like girls. Now their parents are pissed, you know, because, you know, you got this black girl on the team. They like the girl. They're hanging out. They're going away on camps together. They're sleeping in the hotels. They, they don't like it. It's it's, oh, it's right. nasty. It's nasty. Sports right. and like parents and like money, politics. It's there. So, it's there. So, so many factors. And so what did you do after junior year then? What was wow, you know, you let me tell you right now, this is where my life just really took a turn and things just, you know, I, 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 I got tired. I think that's when I first started to be like, this is just, I just want to go somewhere and, you know, not feel this way. Right. I don't want to be around white people anymore, pretty much. Right. I'm, I'm done. Cause I don't want to be hate. I don't want to hate. So I'd rather just move away, you know, like leave, leave them. Right. So I was playing on a summer league AAU, which is, um, American Athletic Union. It's like it's like travel team sports. So, and my AAU basketball team was based in New York City, Manhattan. That's how good I was. You know what I'm saying? Like I was so nice that I was playing basketball in New York City on in the summer during the school year. Like I was nice getting recruited. And I talked to my coach, and she happened to coach a high school team called Manhattan Center for Science and Mathematics. And I said you know, why not go to the city? If you, if I can prove to people that if I can make it in New York city, triple a Manhattan PSAL sports, the top league of all leagues in New York city, then I'm better than these out here in LaGrange. You gotta be kidding me. You gotta be. So I did, I made the team kicked ass. What did that require me traveling from Pleasant Valley? to New York wow. City every day, wow. every day, That's dedication. every day, wow. going to school, still making grades, practicing so after, how, still making grades, that is crazy. That graduated, is so, that is so committed, so intense. graduated, knew that Metro North, so, like the back of my hand, <laughs> you know, and, so and that's me, you, and that's what I did, yeah. Yeah, you do. You did what it took, but that's a lot yeah. that's for a teenager to think of of this level of commitment and dedication. That's really amazing. What yeah. what brought you? What happened that you ended up uh, joining the army then? Was so right after high school, um, or you went what what to you know what um, there to there. I mean, if you want to talk about you know, that, you know, no, no, I do, I do. I'm just gonna be honest, you know, and I hate to say that, I, and I I'm keep saying I'm being honest because you know I don't. And that's why I wanted us to have this private time because there's a lot of things that I haven't been honest, like, and be able to talk about. And I wanted to make sure you got that time with me because, you know, I'll be honest and I'm human. I'm, I'm, I'm not saying I was right, but after 9-11 happened, I was on the bandwagon like, yo, we need to bomb over Baghdad. Just, I don't know what, I, I couldn't believe what happened. And that's what I, did, I didn't know, right? I was young. Right. So y'all, please forgive me. That's not how I feel anymore about things. And that's not how you look at things. You don't just put people into a category like that off of one person's thing, because I don't want people to do that to me. And I see that now. But that's what started it. Right. When that happened, I wanted to go and I was getting recruited by all five branches for the for college um, for sports. They wanted all of them wanted me to join. And the thing is, though, this is the catch. Well, of course, you know, they're going to want you to literally like when you sign up for college like they then they ask you in that contract as well to serve like you have to serve um a certain amount of time and you know i'm my mom's only daughter at the time and to see her get so upset about me wanting to i didn't i didn't i said uh you know and, and once again she knew things that i didn't she knew that me being gay and a lesbian at the time things like that and i'll say gay because I use gay as a broad spectrum of LGBTQAI plus. Um, so as being gay, you know, I, I, I didn't, I didn't realize, you know. So I, I listened, and I fell back. And then uh, Barack Obama 
my man, um, got in office and started to make change and give me some hope once again, right? That, okay, well, maybe I can, you know, serve the military. You know, I was older. Like I said, this was when I was probably like, what, 27, 26 now. So, oh, you know, I had, okay. I had gotten a little older. Um, and I said, uh, now is my opportunity. You know, I, I can serve with pride in who I am, with my gayness, and uh, I, can, I can serve my country with honor because it would be an honor to serve this country. I love America, God bless it. I mean, my, my people, black people built America. So I, 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 I did it, I did it. And um, it was unfortunate, you know, cause who would have known that somebody like Donald Trump would have ever become president of the United States. Didn't think that would have happened. I really didn't. I thought it would be Hillary Clinton. I never thought that he would win. And of course he did. And that's kind of like, you know, a, a twist, right? In the whole uh, hope shot that I had, it, it went right. it went real reverse, right? You know? So how yeah. long, well, first of all, how old are you? Because I'm 31 years old. I'm 31, first 31. of all. I don't ever say I'm old. I'm 31 years young. Okay. And so, but you are young. And so when... Um, uh, you joined the army at 27. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And how long were you in the army then? I was in the army for about three years. I got out early. You got yeah. My contract was about three. No, it was how many years ago? More than one. I got out in 2019, 2018. Oh, okay. 2018, 2019. Oh, how did you join at 20, at 27 then? That doesn't. That's what I said. I think it was. So I, it is. It's, so this is why it's confusing for me too. Right. And I don't know how I could ever forget it. Right. The day I joined, but I, I remember the day I joined, it was January 25th, but like it was, that's what I mean. It was on the, it was on the end of a year and I had just turned an age in October and those last three months were crazy. Like I got into a car accident like the, the paper, like it was a lot. So then like, and then the snowstorm hit and I couldn't start basic on time because of the plane. And like, so things were really just crazy. Like I got married like in November. Like, really? so I don't, um, yeah, I was married, got divorced, wife cheated on me. Typical stuff, typical, typical military stuff right there. Cheating wife while you're on deployment. Happened to me, what, even what? a handsome fellow like myself. Yeah. Right. I know. So uh, you, how could you they? Trans <laughs> Um, relationship, man, the hardest thing in the world. Um, mm -hmm. So, so you, do you want to talk about the army and what happened there and what made you leave? Do you want to talk about your transition? Do what do you want to talk about now? Whatever you want, whatever you want, like whatever you want well, to hear I mean, about, whatever you think people want to, you know, hear about. I mean, I think people would would love to hear, you know, all of it, any of it. Um, I want to be uh, aware of, of, of how much time, um, you know, because usually I try to do an hour because that's a night. I think it's a it's a nice amount for people to listen to. Um, mm -hmm. So I think we might have time for both. You want to if you feel like sharing a bit about your army and what had you leave? I think we can talk about that and then we can talk about okay. um, you transitioning because it sounds from what I'm hearing in terms of your timeline that you you transition only after the army or no was right okay so yeah I, I mean i honestly i'll do the i'll do a brief about the army um and some people might be like well why do i want to keep it brief about the army and i'll tell you why why do i want to keep it brief about the army because at the end of the day when people are on facebook or anywhere and they're asking me you know who's hiring literally the first thing that comes in my head is the military um i think it is a place that people can you know, really be all they can be, right? You really, there's so much to do. There's so many jobs and there's so much opportunity. It's just that people like me and that look like me are disenfranchised from these opportunities because of the way we're treated when we're in there. Mm -hmm. We're marginalized. And that doesn't mean that we don't have a place there though. So that's why I said I'm going to keep it brief because I don't want to talk too much bad about it without saying at least something good because I do suggest it when people do ask who's hiring. I do. Um, you know, I was an outstanding soldier. I went to basic training. I graduated with awards. Was the only female, was the, um, you know, only female at the time to get an award out of basic for most motivated soldier. That's big, 
right, to go out of basic and get a most motivated soldier, I, I'm driven and I am powered, like I said, by, by a higher power. I do have, like you said, a spiritual being and a higher power calling that really I feel powers me and keeps me grounded. Um, so I got through that. And then, you know, that brought animosity within itself. So there's a little tick. You got to see how, you know, your comrades start to kind of still be your comrades, but also not really support you as much as they used to maybe, or, you know, want to, want to up you as much as they used to, because like, you know, the animosity, everybody was trying to like, kind of be crabs in the bucket. They all want to get somewhere and go somewhere and um, kind of get out of something. Whereas I like putting in the work. Um, so people didn't like that, right? Because they're trying to shortcut things. You know, you got people who join the military who want to come there and think that they're going to get changed. And, you know, people who sign their kids up to go and think that they're going to come out becoming men. And it's like, you know, not really true. They don't make magic happen. Like, it's not like that. You I had kids leave, didn't want to stay. You can't make people do that stuff. Sorry, folks, right. not the place for it. You know, um, so you'd have these people who are in the military who don't belong, who aren't there for the right reasons. And um, I think that those are the people who I'm about to mention just don't belong there because they don't see what the purpose and the whole point of it is. Like, you know, anybody should be able to serve this country that wants to serve this country. Doesn't matter, you know, your age, gender, sex, creed, things like that. If you can physically meet the demands and mentally sustain, then have at it. Right. Um, so, you know, I went to, on a deployment to South Korea and this was before I had started to medically transition and I was being placed on a floor with all men. I was literally the only biological female on the floor with all wow. biological men. And the other floors were either co-ed or all female. So that is weird right why would they do that not right. sure um well, dangerous kind of didn't really care the army's record. right mm -hmm. i said dangerous considering the army's record with right violence towards women right there's a sharp training which is sexual harassment and rape prevention training like every other week there they can't stop it from happening you know and and that is interesting that they would do that but then you know i i, I I, me being me, you know me and how I am. I laugh. I'm like, I'm like Simba when he was a kid, right? And he was like laughing at the hyenas at the elephant graveyard. Like, ha, I laugh in the face of danger. Like, ha, ha, ha. Like, you know, like, I like don't know what it is. Like, I just walk. Like, you know, like I just walk and I walk. And if, and if, and if you don't like it, then you don't like it. And, and, you know, I'm not scared. So I didn't think nothing of it. I'm with my boys. They with me. Hey, they're cool. But, you know, what happened was an NCO off duty goes down to the CQ desk, which is like the front desk before you walk in. People have to look at you and make sure you are who you're supposed to be, you know, because once again, we're in the army. We're on an army base. I mean, this is real life stuff. Um, right. You know, came down there and took one of the master key cards, opens my door and walks in on me while I'm naked studying at the laptop and starts to yell at me about how I need to turn my music down. Mind you, it wasn't after hours. It was like middle of the day, sunlight was still out, and you can't just be walking into people's rooms like that. You, you know, you don't even have a uniform on. I don't know you. You know, you're not on duty. Like, so nothing came of it, though. That man never apologized to me. And um, as far as I know, you know, nothing came of it. Uh, another instance happened to me while I was overseas. I um, was sitting outside smoking a cigarette. My platoon sergeant says, everybody fall in. Put my cigarette out, start walking over. He starts yelling at me, hurry up. Yes, sergeant, start moving, start running, fall in. Then he starts to go in on me, talking about private first class Parker. You know, you ain't, your life doesn't matter to me. I don't care if you die. I wouldn't protect you. You know, your life is worthless. I wouldn't care if you died in combat. And, not, and all this in front of a whole platoon. And I just sat there shocked that nobody said nothing. Because I'm only like a PFC. There's other higher ranking people all around me. Where's the line? Where's the line? Like, 
once again, like, yo, that's not called for. You don't talk to people like that. Like, there's one yeah, way to I talk to people, and there's one way not to talk to people. And 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 this is the thing, like, you know, this camaraderie is like BS, right? And it's and they that's what's dangerous because at the end of the day, when I signed up to kill for my country, to to fight the wars, to win war for this nation. I need you to have my back. Well, yeah. I, I, yeah, I need you to have it. my back. And I need to know that you got my back. I'm not saying we can't have beef, right? Because we family and we, you know, we close. But you don't talk to nobody like that. Nobody no, said no, nothing. Nobody, nobody so said that, that, that was it. That was like one of the tipping blocks, right? When nothing came yeah, of that, like, I'm, I was right. like, this is dangerous. Well, if I'm, yeah, if I'm I was not like, going to be right. If I'm not going to be safe. Uh, in so many ways, what's why am I sacrificing? You know, my life potential. My life. If, if there's other jobs to do, worthless. Yeah, no, that's there's crazy. other jobs to do and be so a service. What, so that gets you. That out started it. That and, was like one of the other things, right? And then, then the, 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 this is the this is the tipping point. I got back to to um, in country back to USA. And, you know, of course, Donald Trump was already elected, right? So we're already talking about transgender ban and how transgender people shouldn't be in the military, how it doesn't meet military readiness and blah, 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 blah. Um, and I'm ready to transition. They make me go through are, leaps and bounds, right. hoops and dives, right? I'm talking about I got to go see a therapist every damn day because, like, make sure that make, to make sure that I'm not mentally stable, you have to be diagnosed with a mental illness in order to, to start hormones. This is supposed to be the process step by step. And then once you're medically diagnosed by a therapist and things like that, you go to your doctor, they do your blood work to make sure that you have decent, reasonable levels for a biological female so that you can go on hormones and get reasonable levels for a male. They say, yes, they say, yes. Then somehow I need to bring it to my chain of command in order to get on this medicine because of the changes that I will go through, right? Because you got right. somebody with breasts and uniform, you know, it, it's confusing for them, right? Because they're so used to this and that. And out of respect, they kind of, you know, so they tell me, no, after all this, I got medical doctors, people with MDs behind their names and they saying can't, they can't say no. Wow. Yo, that's what I said. I'm like, how can you say no? And basically, like, yo, I was told to shut up and follow orders in so many words. Wow. He was like, you know, what's your general order number one? And it's like, yo, follow direct orders. Oh yo, and he God. was like, I'm gonna need you to leave. Yo, you know what I mean? Like, basically, like, he was, and at that point, like, when you're a PFC and you're talking to um, a company commander, you know, because honestly, that's your job. Look, I, my life could be a living, would have could have been a living hell. Right, it could have so, been really so bad for I, me. How how long did you know that you wanted to be to transition? Right before. So now to the transgender so how long part. Did you consider, right. Even as a child, I remember having a large clit, and like it fell off though, and like somebody was like, "Well, maybe it was your umbilical cord." I'm like, "Nah, like oh." Yo, I've always thought I had a dick. Right. I've always thought I had a dick, and I've always used it in that kind of way, too. Um, even just to go to the bathroom before I started hormones, even to masturbate before I started hormones, even having sex when I was like a kid, not knowing what I was doing, I was playing that role. And it wasn't right. like I didn't carry that on to after playtime either. You feel me? Like, and I'm saying that because I'm, I'm saying that for all my people out there, like, yo, when you were a kid, you were innocent. You were doing what felt natural. It's only natural that when you right. do certain things, it feels good to your body. Don't blame yourself for those things. It's okay. Right. And, you know, and that's no different. I'm no different. And so then as I kept getting older, um, and I started to develop, I was like, oh, this is not working. You know, baggy clothes, sports bras, um, always played right. sports, was always tall. 
yeah, yeah. yeah. I, 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 you know, so, it fit the so, script. I fit the script so well. And I, and you know, I, I enjoyed when people didn't refer to me as a female. Right. It right. felt fitting. So when did you become, when did you become sufficiently kind of aware of that, that you were like, I'm trans, I'm a man. I want to transition. Was that like a I long time didn't... coming or you always knew it, but you weren't ready to like take step forward? I didn't know there was a such thing as being transgender. I'm gonna be honest. Um, I thought it was like cross-dressers. I thought it was AGs. I thought it was studs. I thought it was, you know, like those stereotypical, you know, night walkers. You know, I didn't know that there was a community of people who genuinely, legitimately felt and identified with being being a, a, the opposite gender or gender fluid or however you want to call it. Like, not on some dress up, not on some sometimes, but like on some this is me. Right. Yo, right, and right. I didn't feel I didn't find that out. So I was in my 20s. I didn't find out about being right. transgender until I was in my 20s. Where, how did you find out? I, yo, uh, Lath Ashley, which by the way, if Lath, hey, Lath, if you see this, bro, like hit me up, stop playing. Like, I know you got famous and all, like I've been trying to get at you. We used to play ball together in high school in New York City. And I thought I recognized him. I'm like, yo, that looks like the girl I used to play back. I'm like, but it can't be. Oh, and then he posts one of his how, transition okay. pictures. And I'm like, yo, bro, do I know you? He's like, yeah, you do, bro. Like, we used to do. I was like, yo, what are you doing? Like, how did you do that? He's like, yo, I'm transgender. Yeah. I said, what? I said, you two, what? So what you, is this? And my mind just poof. Just blew. Wow. Blue. And how old were you when that happened? In my 20s. I want to say early 20s. Early 20s, so about 22, you, 23. That's when you knew and it took you and the rest of the time before acting on it is because you were processing if it was something you could do, like how you would do it safely. Like what, you know. Okay, so uh, delay, no, definitely not, safety was I, never an issue. I mean, I I would kill to have the body I have today, right? Literally, like I would have thoughts about and Google, like how do I get rid of my breasts? Push-ups, you know, running, losing weight, uh, tape, ace bandages, um, binders, sports bras, you name, like, big shirts. Like, yo, stabbing, I, I, I was convinced that the best way to do it was stabbing my boob with a knife so that I could go to the hospital so that they could cut them off. I was trying to get my doctor to tell me that I have fucking cancer to get them gone. I was, I, I wanted to, I, wa I couldn't live. I wasn't okay. It wasn't, I didn't think I looked good, no matter what nobody else said. I wasn't looking to see what I wanted. I wasn't happy. Um, it took a long time for me and, and help. It took help and it took me a long time to appreciate my body, right? It took me a very right. long time to appreciate my breasts. Right. Um, which I did start to, you know, towards the end of um, my time before I started medically transitioning, you know, I, I, I started to appreciate who I was rather than constantly shaming myself, you know, about, about them because at that time there was nothing I could do. You know, I had double right. Ds. Right. Yeah. I, you know, I love that you post pictures, you know, of yourself you know, when you still had breasts and pictures now, and it's like, you do seem to really accept yourself in, in, yeah. in all of the ways that you've shown up in the world, even though now you are feeling like you want to be uh, fully yeah. who you are fully. No, I, I, you know, I, I appreciate that you, that you feel that way. Um, so it took, it took a while to figure out how to access the resources and how to medically transition. And then, um, but it was basically, once you saw your friend do it, you were like, yes, that is right. That's what I want. Thank you for being here and for listening. We hope you are feeling inspired to share your own experience and reality. If you like this video, please share it. You can follow us and hear about our latest video on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. 
And remember that you are valued, you are loved, we see you.